great holiday weekend. Welcome to the rescheduled regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees of the Village of Flossmoor. Today is Tuesday, September 3rd. Just a couple of reminders before we get started. This meeting is being streamed via Zoom for the convenience of those who are unable to make it in person. Public comment will be after uh, brief recognitions. I'll call folks from the sign-in sheet and ask that you introduce yourself and observe our public comment policy by acting with the forum, addressing the public body at large and not a single member of staff, and then also limiting your comments to five minutes each for a total uh, public comment time of 30 minutes. The time is 7.32, Clerk Logavo, which please call the roll. Trustee Brenda Scott. Yes. Trustee Daggett. Here. Trustee Driscoll. Here. Trustee Lofton. Here. Trustee Mitros. Here. Trustee Mustafa. Here. Mayor Nelson. President, thank you so much. We have a forum. Uh, first off, I'd like to welcome Carl Larson. He has over 40 years uh, practicing law. He's to my right. Kathy's not here. She's allowed to take vacation every once in a while. Um, he's had his own firm for over 30 years and specializes in municipal law. So thank you so much uh, for giving Kathy a much needed break and uh, stepping in for it. First off, uh, we've got some recognitions and appointments to make tonight, and um, I could not be prouder um, of the work that Homework Blossom High School does, and all of our kiddos, our coaches, our teachers, um, all of the time that volunteers and parents put into our children um, on a daily basis, all of the volunteer hours that our students do uh, across the village all year long. They really make Blossom more shine. So um, with that, I'm going to introduce some uh, special folks, and I'm going to ask Claire Modalvo if um, she can um, be at the front. Sorry, I had too much fun with family this weekend, and I'm, I'm recovering. I'm fine. Uh, most everyone knows that um, Homer Plossmore High School won uh, the school's first basketball state championship in March, but we had quite a few other state champions and each, even a national champion to celebrate as well. Homewood Plossmore's theater production musical, You're in Town, was named Best Production in a State by the Broadway and Chicago Illinois High School Music Theater Awards in May. A lot of amazing performers and also uh, tech folks in the back, but Flossmore resident Stella Hoyt was named an Illinois High School Music Musical Theater Award Best Actress nominee. Flossmore's Bryce Stewart and Gabrielle McKinney also received Illinois High School Musical Theater um, nominations. And then Jasmine Rhodes won the Illinois High School Musical Theater Award uh, for the Actress category and was representing the state of Illinois in New York City at the Jimmy Awards. I want to congratulate all the cast, crew, students, over 50 cast, crew, students, um, musicians, student musicians, um, producer Gail Smith. I think Gail Smith is here, if you want to come forward. And then we also have Annie Calderon. She's the director. She's here. Come on forward. Okay. And Annie is um, directing. is directing uh, the first uh, theater production of the year, Wizard of Oz. Um, it's a children's production, but it's really for all ages. And it's, uh, they're going to be on stage the last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, two shows on Saturday of September. So come on up. Do you want to add anything to that? No, you can cover it. It's an amazing uh, cast, crew, the teachers, and staff just does an incredible job. So stay right there. I'm going to keep calling folks. Um, next, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, political science winners. We had a uh, national champion, Jack Kuros, who is a Baltimore resident. I think he's off of college. He goes to the University of Illinois. But he was named the national champion at the National Political Science Bee held in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, congratulations to his teacher and coach, uh, HF math teacher, Michael Seck. Speech team had some exciting things happening. Uh, this 2024 speech team had three individual state champions at the Illinois State High School Association competition held in Peoria back in February. Flossmore resident and senior Stella Hoyt won in dramatic interpretation. Emma Steiner finished first in impromptu speaking, and Jasmine Rhodes again brought home first place in or oratorical declamation. Emma and Jasmine have since graduated. Um, the head coach for the speech team is HF math teacher Prince Lowe. Mr. Williams. <laughs> the 
to date. This is exciting. Four Vikings brought home State of Illinois titles in Lincoln-Douglas debate back in March. Congratulations to Kevin Gibbick, who is a graduate, not school hasn't started, he's going to University of Chicago, but he's here tonight, come on forward. And underclassmen teammates, Xavier Scott, Max Benitez, and Alia Gaskin. They were coached by HF teachers Katie Cole, Beverly Lenore, Emily Carroll, Dan Bush, and HF alumna Tiana Sharp. But wait, there's more. The Special Olympics Unified Soccer Team won the state championship a year ago, just about a year ago, back in October. I'd like to welcome the Unified State Champion Soccer Team here to the uh, podium and congratulate Coach Katie Rice and Katie Nakula. Do you all want to step on the steps or? The Village of Flossmore has been honored to escort these champions back from the highway. Uh, thanks to Flossmore Police and Fire who have helped escort these champions back uh, to HF High School, providing a little bit of a parade and encouragement. We are so proud of the work that these students and these dedicated teachers and the parents and all the supporters, anybody who's bought a bag of double good popcorn or supported any of their fundraiser efforts, uh, thank you so much, uh, car washes. Uh, we really appreciate your efforts. So thank you. One more round of applause, please.
Whereas childhood cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children, one in 285 children in the United States will be diagnosed before their 20th birthday. Each year, 15,780 children are diagnosed with cancer in the United States. And whereas globally, there are approximately 400,000 children diagnosed with cancer each year. Globally, a child is diagnosed with cancer every 80 seconds. The average age of a child diagnosed with cancer is eight years old. And whereas two-thirds of childhood cancer patients will have chronic health conditions as a result of their treatment toxicity, with one quarter being classified as severe to life threatening. Approximately one half of childhood cancer families rate the associated financial toxicity due to out-of-pocket expenses as considerable to severe. And whereas, as of 2020, only six new drugs have been developed for childhood cancer. The National Cancer Institute recognizes the unique research needs of childhood cancer and the associated need for increased funding to carry this out. And whereas hundreds of nonprofit organizations at the local and national level, including the American Childhood Cancer Organization, are helping children with cancer and their families cope through educational, emotional, and financial support. And whereas researchers and healthcare professionals work diligently dedicating their expertise to treat and cure children with cancer. And whereas too many children are affected by this deadly disease, and more must be done to raise awareness and find a cure. Now, therefore, I, Michelle I. Nelson, Mayor of Flossmore, do hereby proclaim September 2024 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Flossmore. And I urge all Americans to observe Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and support this cause that deeply impacts families in every, in every community across our country. Thank you so much.
construction engineer that eliminated, <coughs> eliminated um, at grade crossing and also electrified the Illinois Central Railroad line um, back in the 1920s. So um, this is kind of a full circle moment. Whereas data from the Federal Railroad Administration states that 2,192 highway rail grade crossing collisions which included 766 crossing injuries and 247 crossing fatalities occurred in the United States during 2023. And whereas 1,378 pedestrian rail trespass casualties occurred in the United States, including 715 trespass-related fatalities and another 663 trespass injuries during 2023. And whereas Illinois had the fifth largest number of trespassing casualties in 2023, with a total of 53, which included 33 deaths and 20 injuries. And whereas Illinois has the sixth largest number of highway rail grade crossing collisions in 2023, with a total of 102. Of those, 18 resulted in deaths, and 22 resulted in injuries. And whereas a couple days, yeah, couple of ways to reduce the number of fatalities and injuries include educating and informing the public about rail safety, reminding the public that railroad right-of-ways are private property, enhancing public awareness of the dangers associated with highway rail grade crossings, ensuring pedestrians and motorists are looking and listening while near railways, and obeying established traffic laws. And whereas the International Association of Chiefs of Police National Operation Lifesaver, the United States Department of Transportation, all local, state, and county, and railroad law enforcement officers, first responders, and railroad corporations commit to partnering together to educate, at a national level, all aspects of railroad safety, to enforce applicable laws in support of sea tracks, safe training, formerly known as National Rail Safety. Now, therefore, I, Michelle I. Nelson, Mayor of the Village of Baltimore, do I attest to full support for planning September 23rd through 29th as Z Tracks Pink Training. And I encourage all residents to recognize the importance of rail safety and safety. Thank you so much. Uh, we are now going to move on to citizens present wishing to address the board. And I'll start uh, from the top of the list, Ms. Andrea Perry. Welcome. Good evening, my name is Andrea Perry, 37 year Baltimore resident, investigating to determine the truth behind the firing of Chief Police Darrell Jones. In court documents submitted by the village, the village admits in the spring 2023, defendants Mr. Mayor Michelle Nelson and village manager Bridget Watson hired plaintiff as the village of Baltimore Police Chief. Plaintiff understood his direct supervisor, Water, was obligated to assess whether he was meeting the village's high expectations for ensuring public safety and effective operational management. What the village admitted to in this statement reveals violations of village codes. Number one, the village admits Mayor Nelson and Bridget Water hired plaintiff as the village of Crossworth Police Chief. The village manager does not have the authority to hire the village of Baltimore's police chief. Village Code 29-1-3, the Office of Chief of Police, who shall be appointed by the mayor, by and with the advice and consent of the Board of Trustees. Village Code 5-1-2, all officers other than elective officers shall be appointed by the mayor and board of trustees as it's provided by statute. The village two, the village admits his Chief Jones direct supervisor Waddle was obligated to assess whether he was meeting the village's high expectations for ensuring public safety and effective operational management. The village manager does not have the authority to be the direct supervisor of the chief of police. Village Code 5-2-2 duties. He, 
the mayor shall be chief executive office officer of the village. He shall have supervision over all the executive officers of the village. This code establishes the mayor, not the village manager, as the direct supervisor of the village chief of police. Village Code 29-1-1, Police Department, an executive department of the village. Village Code 29-1-4, duties of chief, he shall be responsible for the performance by the police department of all its functions, and all persons who are members of the department shall serve subject to the orders of the chief of police. Village Code 29-1-9, the chief of police may make or prescribe such rules and regulations for the guidance of the members of the police department as he shall see fit. Such rules, when approved by the mayor and board of trustees, shall be binding on such members. So I ask, how was it that Village Code was violated when Chief Jones was informed that the chief of police was hired by the village manager along with the mayor? I was, I asked, was it, how was the village, how was code violated when Chief Jones was directly supervised by the village manager and not the mayor? How was it that his termination was fully and unquestionably based on a recommendation of the village manager who shouldn't have been given the authority in the first place? Who is obligated to assess whether the mayor and village manager meet the village's high expectations for ensuring public safety and effective operational management? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Heron. I can assure you that no village codes were violated. Um, I appreciate your comments and your time. Uh, Ms. Dubstein. No, thank you. Ms. Dubstein, is she here? I will say something in my head. Ms. Marilyn, I think if she will dialogue with you and accept that back. We will follow up with code for you so you can see that. Sure. Um, Marilyn Tapania, would you like to say anything else? Um, we have some time left. Does anybody else want to address the board on an agenda or non agenda item? Welcome, Ms. Marshall. Thank you. Um,
The dues and subscription is the 491 for the ILCMA. Correct. And then the Zoom is for the eyes. Correct. Okay. And then on our page 30 for the M and J underground emergency storm sewer and sanitary school over here. So uh, that was an item that was in our manager's report, and the item was dated on July 29th. In terms of the incident occurring was July 25th, I believe. And I would request for this item to be uh, brought up sooner than today's meeting. As an example, uh, we are going to be approving the emergency payments of this item. And for myself, I wasn't aware that there was a storm sewer issue, which we'll talk about in line 10, so I'll wait for that. But if we are able to, as a board to get a manager's report sooner for an emergency situation. Um, So I'll come back to that and get to that line item. And then I just have a question about the appraisals, which if we can get an address for the appraisals of properties. Which vendor are you here? On page 22, the American Claims Purpose. Vendor was used to appraise two pieces of equipment uh, that have since been uh, the board approved at the previous meeting um, to sell those two pieces of equipment to the village of Manhattan. Um, so they were equipment uh, appraisals, not property appraisals. Okay. Thank you. 
but just generally speaking, depending on the, the um, size and the depth of the repair work that's needed, uh, there are times when we have to call in a contractor to do that for us. Um, they contractors specialize in that um, uh, kind of trench work uh, where we we don't do that kind of work every day. Um, and so Public Works makes that judgment call as to when they're calling in somebody uh, to help with something particularly uh, deep. Um, and Dan can talk about uh, this particular point, uh, for example. Um, yeah, sure. So the yes, answer there was referenced in John's memo. Um, there was an <coughs> answer to the public. Um, that would have been an answer to uh, whoever was going to be doing the work itself. Um, conditions of the soil, obviously, and that the trench that you're working in, <coughs> as well as the depth. Uh, it was mentioned here uh, the, the depth of the repair is at 14 feet, which is um, about 6 feet deeper than we are able to currently uh, repair things at. We have a trench box that is able to do uh, depths of about 8 feet. So the, there was no uh, hazard for the public. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, I can speak to that. Um, is there another question? I'm sorry. So those essentially were my questions, just to make sure that we are on the same page. Thank goodness there was no uh, issues where the public safety was involved. But I am saying as a board, just to be a part of a simple statement, it didn't have to be as detailed as it was here for that particular notification. This particular notification in detail is appreciated. I'm just saying for the board's knowledge that we just be kept apart when something like that happens because we did have another board meeting uh, in between then and now. Thank you. Sorry, just a question. Just a minute. Um, so Dan, when we have a dig like that, uh, a lot of that, what we can and can't do depends on what equipment we have and then also there's ocean regulations that you guys have to follow as far as what you're able to do. Um, how often does it happen that we have to call someone? Because we can't handle that. Um, I would say a majority of our construction is within our ancient capabilities. Um, I, you know, if I had to break it down in percentage, I'm not so sure I'd be able to do that very well. But there are certain parts of town where some of our water main and some of our sanitary sewer and storm sewer as well are, are below of our capabilities right now. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a, a large portion of any stretch. Maybe, maybe a couple times a year? Um, a few times a year. Okay. I think that it, 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 we come across situations where the water may might be 15 feet deep. Uh, in this case, uh, the same thing is 14 feet deep. So, yeah, a few times a year. And that's just because we don't have trench boxes deep enough to support it. Yeah, the, the, that's the primary reason. And to Bridget's point, there's certain, uh, there's certain situations we come across where uh, it's better to call in somebody who has a Yeah, the reason I was getting to it was if it's only happened a couple times a year, it doesn't make sense for us to purchase a deeper trench box because those are fairly expensive for yes. a couple times a year. And then being that deep also has a, a level of risk to our ability to force. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, can I? Yeah, Eric, I think one of the things that I think years ago, uh, between Braver and Bransky and Hawthorne, Thank you. Are there any other discussion items for this? Uh, I have a question. Sure. Yes. Um, these repairs, these very necessary repairs, were over $52,000, which is material. And for that reason, I'm looking at the explanation in the invoice on page 55 as compared to the letter from John Brunke. 
and I noticed that the MJ did not describe it in a way which assigns responsibility. Their language is the storm sewer had been broken by the contractor on site before we got there, which is partially untrue because the contractor did not hit the sewers and the sewers are in poor condition. So I think it's important, especially when we have repairs of this significance, that we reflect the proper circumstances in all the documentation. Absolutely, I understand that. Um, I'm sorry, the, the line that you're referring to, is so that you know, page 55? On 55, in the invoice narrative, in the power description. Uh, we're being done by another contractor? The storm sewer had been broken by a contractor on site before we got right. there. Yeah. It I, meant that is not accurate. Yeah, I think that's a situation where, you know, contractors are, are very nervous to be on the hook for things uh, of that nature. So that, that, that feels like you know, it's a situation where they're trying to make sure they don't catch any sort of blame for any work that was done that wasn't there. I understand. They could have removed blame just by saying, what the situation will look like. Okay. So just for us, when we're spending this much money on a repair, and when we want, might want this same contractor to come in again, I wouldn't want our documentation to blame in, in a Actually, I agree. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? I would, I would just say, you know, this happens all the time. I mean, in the village, I would, I'd like John to be accurate on this, but long before I was a trustee, I had my own form sewer leading out to the main repair area. I had my insurance company, and I said it was 20 feet down, and uh, we had to pay for that ourselves, because it got closer to the main after our contractor had done all the excavation down to that level. Uh, they found the cloth for me broken. The contractor nearly contacted the village, they shut down the water for a two-block area, used the contractor's uh, own excavating equipment to go down and repair that main while they had it all open. So this, 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 this happens quite a bit. You know, once they get in there and they're doing the construction, they see that the actual main's broken and they go and fix it. So that this, this really isn't extraordinary in any means. No, not at all. In our you know, insurance language, we'll actually specify something like we're talking about. There's no other discussion for the Trustee Driscoll? Yes. Trustee Lofton? Yes. Trustee Mitros? Yes. Trustee Mustafa? Yes. Trustee Red Scott? Yes. Trustee Daggett? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you so much. We don't have any formal reports of committees or commissions, uh, but I want to thank the whole of Flossmore High School and um, Tom Gerber of Flossmore uh, Future and everybody who participates in the Hidden Town Hacker as well. Those monies contributed to the installation of a brand new sculpture centennial out in front of uh, Moscow Library. So, a uh, big kudos to them. I also want to thank the Art Commission for um, the successful brick installation. I see several folks who purchased brick. Thank you so much for your support of uh, public art and uh, your contributions to uh, Moscow Future. Uh, next, I have an action item. Um, is it it's an action item to move to executive session to uh, discuss the remaining minutes of prior executive session. It, Trustee Brad Scott, is, is that what you're looking to do? Have a discussion of executive session about the minutes? I had a modification to one of the minutes, so I just want to read you that, yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to call for a motion uh, to move to executive session to discuss the approval of executive session minutes and hold them in Can I get a motion for that? So moved. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we will be back. Roll call, sorry. Yes. Uh, Trustee Lofton. Yes. Trustee Mitros. Yes. Trustee Yes. Trustee Mustafa. Yes. Trustee Bradley Scott. Yes. Trustee Daggett. Yes. Trustee Lofton. Yes. Trustee Driscoll. Yes. Motion passes.
you get this age. <laughs>
So great. Uh, so we got playing again, uh, but we girls would love to have your support. I've been able to coach cup coaching this year. Uh, so we're right over uh, Western Avenue, uh, right uh, on Mustang Field on tomorrow at 4.30 and then on Friday at 4.30. So girls would love to have you out there. It's a lot of fun watching. Uh, they are pretty incredible. So that's all. Cool. Thank you so much. Trustee Gerson. Uh, no questions or comments. Trustee Lawson. I'd like to encourage all of those of you who are participating in the up and coming gym to do your best, keep your faith, move forward. I know this one of us fully in this place. So uh, good luck and uh, let's have a good time. Thank you. Trustee Mike Rose. Uh, Scott, I'm curious, did some of the rafts that spark the Since our, are we through with the water meter replacement? Is that over? How far do we get to go? And Okay, is, have we seen the buildings go up as a result of that? Do you um, see the Yes, we've seen some. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, there there's kind of two parts to that. We've definitely seen some increase in bullying, but we've also seen an increase of like uh, the extreme meter actually catching leaks. Oh, okay. So we've had a ton of people call in say, my bill looks very odd, and now we have the data where we can go look live. Yeah. 